The world standard for carrier-based aviation is, and has been since the end of the Second World War, the US Navy. The US has excelled at creating the full spectrum of aircraft that can cover the same capabilities as land-based tactical aircraft. But the US has not had to face a near-peer carrier force since the Second World War. The only country that is now developing a comprehensive and large carrier force is China. While China's first two carriers are Stobar carriers, the plan's future carriers will be Catabar, launching aircraft by electromagnetic catapults, including fifth generation aircraft. These will be joined by 4.5 generation aircraft with good range payload performance, carrying larger weapons that can be carried internally on fifth generation aircraft. G'day and salutations. Today's briefing, US and Chinese carrier aircraft. What will their air wings look like? This briefing will examine the makeup of the US and China's carrier air wings and look to the future. For China, this mainly refers to aircraft used on the Fujian, but also to a lesser degree on those on the Liaoning and Shandong. At the end of the briefing, I'll link two videos I think will be of interest. The premier US Navy combat aircraft is the F-35C. It offers the best range payload performance of the F-35 family and can carry larger weapons internally than the F-35B. It has a larger wing area that allows for decreased landing speed and increased range payload performance. The F-35C, however, is not in service on all US carriers, at the moment only certified to operate off three of them. It has a length of 51.5 feet or 15.7 metres, a wingspan of 43 feet or 13.1 metres, or 9.1 metres when folded. China's soon-to-be primary naval combat aircraft is the J-35, likely now in low-rate initial production. It is also likely that it has already conducted launch and recovery cycles off the Fujian, although there is no proof of this as yet. We should expect the J-35 to have at least the same level of technology as the J-20. The J-35 will provide the Navy Air Force with a stealth strike fighter only matched by the F-35C. While we don't yet know its exact dimensions, rough figures suggest a length of 18 metres or 59 feet, a wingspan of 13.5 metres or 44.3 feet, or 8.7 metres when folded. So it's roughly the size of the F-18 EF, but being a stealth aircraft with an internal weapons bay. Augmenting the F-35C is the F-A-18 EF, which has been in service for some time and will remain a critical component of US carrier air wings for the foreseeable future. A 4.5 generation strike fighter, it also forms the basis of the EA-18G electronic warfare aircraft. It will often carry weapons that are too large to be carried internally on the F-35C, in particular surface attack missiles. It has a length of 60.4 feet or 18.4 metres, a wingspan of 44.6 feet or 13.6 metres, or 9.3 metres when folded. The plan's analogue of the FA-18EF is the J-15. As with the FA-18, it will often carry weapons that are too large to be carried internally on the J-35, including air-to-air -air and surface attack missiles. It has good range payload performance provided by a large internal fuel capacity. The J-15T is already in service and has been seen operating from the Chinese carriers Liaoning and Shandong. The J-15T is a big aircraft, but it does fold well. It has a length of 71.8 feet or 21.9 metres, a wingspan of 48.2 feet or 14.7 metres, or 7.4 metres when folded. As with the FA-18, the J-15T will also provide the basis for an electronic warfare variant for suppression of enemy air defences and other roles. In the future, these air wings will include sixth generation aircraft. For the US, the FA-XX, well, possibly given recent developments, replacing the FA-18s, and for China, possibly the J-50, or whatever it ends up being called, should it go into production. The key enabler for carrier fighters are the airborne early warning and control aircraft. For the US, this is the E-2D Hawkeye, which entered service in 2015, with the original versions entering service in 1964. For the PLAN, fixed-wing airborne early warning and control 
will be provided by the KG600, which will likely soon enter initial operational capability. The plant currently operates a rotary-winged early warning and control capability by way of the Z18J, which operates off the Liaoning and Shandong. It could also operate off the Fujian, but would offer significantly less capability than the KJ600. Another important enabler for carrier aircraft is air refuelling. A significant program for the US Navy is the development of a UAV air refuelling aircraft, the MQ-25 Stingray. The Navy's goal for the Stingray is to be able to deliver up to 16,000 pounds or 7,250 kilograms of fuel at a range of 500 nautical miles. The plan, however, at least in the immediate future, will rely on the J-15T being used as a buddy tanker. Now the plan could develop a UAV tanker as well, but as yet we have no proof of this. And finally, anti-submarine warfare helicopters. The US Navy uses the MR-60 Seahawk, which can also be used for other missions. The plan has a variety of helicopters it can use off its carriers, with the most capable being the Z-8-18 family. There is also the new Z-20, but it won't have the range payload performance of the Z-18. So carrier air wings might look as follows. For China, notional air wing of 70 aircraft off the Fujian, 24 J-35 strike fighters, with part of this total potentially including stealthy UCAVs, 24 J-15 strike fighters, with some being used for buddy refueling, five J-15 electronic warfare, five KJ-600 airborne early warning and control, 10 Z-18 anti-submarine warfare helicopters, and two Z-18 or Z-9 search and rescue helicopters. For US carriers, a carrier group of around 75 from 2026 with 10 F-35C strike fighters, 36 F-A-18 EF strike fighters, seven EA-18G Growler electronic warfare aircraft, five E-2D airborne early warning and control, four to five MQ-25 tankers, and between eight and 12 Seahawk anti-submarine warfare helicopters. I'll cover the weapons these aircraft would employ in a future briefing. In summary, I don't expect carrier on carrier action between the US and Chinese navies, but these carrier air wings could well be used in action in the Pacific, where their aircraft will be play critical roles against air, land and sea targets. That concludes today's briefing. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share and don't forget to click the notification button so you don't miss the next briefing. You never know what it will be about. Happy to take suggestions for future briefings from members. Until next time, Vale de Cerro.